Okay, right. so the name of our uh, devotion tonight is called What I Need Most. That's a good question. What and I it's need one most. it's it's one Think about that. that you you end up answering every day by our actions, don't we? We because what we end up doing and it, unfortunately sometimes we may not be gravitating toward what we need most. So it's a good thing. And you know, I remember There's a difference between need and want. Yeah, I, I remember years ago, and some of you may remember this, there was a uh, like a little test that was going around and it said if you were in a it, it was asking you if you were in a plane wreck and you only had uh, 30 seconds to get out items, list the five top items that you would grab and list them in order of their importance. What was so, the items? Uh, there was like a flashlight, a flare, a uh, food, water, you know, different things. So it was, Matches. it was really, it, it was a unique experiment because it made you think to evaluate what do I need most to survive. That's right. So that's what we're going to be talking about tonight. So this morning when you walked into the living, the living room, you said, I need a back scratcher. Of course, I've, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've always been his back scratcher. We talk about things that we need most, right? <laughs> we have probably ever, say it a lot through the day. Have what? you ever had an itch that was just out of reach you for you? Reach you know it. what I'm talking about? It's like, oh, I'm almost there. I can almost get it. And there's nobody around. And you, so you go find the corner of a wall or a, uh, you s step inside a doorway. And, you know, and you're rubbing your back trying to get that itch and uh, scratch it just in the right spot. And I thought to myself, man, sometimes what I need most is just a back scratcher. I remember when I was probably five years old that the house that we lived in it used to be the old Morley Hotel. It was a like a two-story house. It was built in the 1800s and just built like a fort, kind of like our house, you know, built strong. But anyway, the staircase had a rough um, panel board. It was real wood. It wasn't paneling, but it was just like ribbed. And I remember going up to it and just scratching my back oh, on really? it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, sometimes you get a hair in your yeah. back or something like, especially if you have long hair like mine. It's just like you yeah. can't find it. I know exactly what you're talking. <laughs> about. <laughs> but anyway, you were talking about yeah, the the it, it's you know it, it's funny because we talked about what we feel like we need most has a lot to do with what we're experiencing in the moment. So like if you've got an itch, you're, after, you're, you're wanting one of those back scratchers in the shape of a hand. If you're fishing and you run out of bait, have you ever done that before where you run out of bait and the fish are biting and you're thinking, man, if I could find just one more worm around here someplace or trying to catch a grasshopper or the, you, you lose your lure and, and or your hook and you're thinking, man, and you're digging around trying to find another hook because you don't want to give up the fishing expedition. And there are so many things. I remember one time I went camping Funny. at, uh, <laughs> it was called Lake Gerardo. And I, this has been years ago, I took a group of uh, the young men camping at our home church. And we pitched a tent. And I'm telling you, I was in a hurry when we left. And so I got there and I got to looking around. You needed a checklist. I, yeah, exactly. I got to looking around for something to cook with and cook on. And I thought, oh, man. And so... I made it a game, and I said, all right, guys, I said, we're going to play like, we, you know, that this is survival, and we have to try and find those things that are going to help us survive, and I said, so the first <laughs> thing we have to find is something to cook on. They didn't know you forgot everything. No, I, so I'm digging through the van, I find an old, you know, those tins like that cookies, can? that cookies, no, 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 like cookies would come in, you know, like a can, a cookie tin, and oh, yeah. so... We it, and the thing was is it was painted, so I took the lid off of that. I got uh, had I had to get a fire going, so we had to go borrow a match. <laughs> I didn't even have a match, so I, we went and borrowed a match, got a fire going, had to burn the paint off of that tin, and then I thought, man, I sh I don't want to take a chance of these kids getting you know paint Lead poisoning. And so I I had one of them go borrow some aluminum foil from another camper. I laid the aluminum foil in the tin. And then I scrambled eggs. Those kids never forgot trying to pick aluminum foil out of their scrambled <laughs> eggs and eat them. But it was, you know, what I needed in the moment. And then during that process, that night, 
we were, you know, cooking hot dogs, which I wasn't no big deal, you know, you get a fire going and you got a stick. Yeah. But then all of a sudden I had a raccoon come down out of the woods into our camp and he got real close and I took one of those hot dogs and put it on the end of a knife and reached out like that to see if the raccoon had taken and that raccoon came right up to me, reached out, pulled the hot dog off the end of that oh. knife and took off up in the woods. And the boy said, where's he going? And I was teasing. I said, oh, he's going to get his family. Well, in about 10 minutes, here came about five or six raccoons. Was it his baby, her babies? No, no, these were full-grown oh, raccoons. This goodness. had to be like brother and sister and mom and dad and aunt and uncle and grandma and grandpa <laughs> coming into the camp. And so that night we had to make sure that we picked everything up because we did not need raccoons pilfering through our stuff. I liked your other camping story too. At Which ones? Watkins when that Oh, yeah. We had uh, You needed order. We were I, I took a group out and this was a very primitive it really wasn't even a campground. It was like a state park, but nobody was out there. They had mowed off a grassy area and so I took uh, the boys from the church out there and had gotten permission from you know, we had two boys that wanted to go and they were teenagers but they were probably thirteen and had to ask their parents permission and I explained to them where we would be and what parents was going didn't to be really know you. No, they didn't know me at all. I mean, you know, other than I had been by to pick up their uh, boys with the church band. And so they agreed to let them go and I told them where we were and all this and so the kids are, you know, I mean, man, it's it's night. You know, the boys are hooping and hollering and running around, you know, having a big time. And I thought, boy, I got to get some order in here, you know, because I was busy setting up camp. And so I finally hollered at the boys. I said, "Come on, come on, everybody, come in here and gather around the fire." So we got a fire going. Man, it's pitch black. You couldn't see anything. There's no electricity out in this place. I mean, it there, there's there's no restrooms out in this place. It's it's totally primitive. And all of a sudden, you know, I, I, I'm talking to them about, you know, peer pressure and stuff like this. And I'm telling you, I look up and about 10 feet away from me, a flashlight comes on. And it's oh. those boys, mom and dad. They had they were checking him they, out. They, they had driven up there, walked. I, 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 you had to walk a little ways to get to where we were. They walked back there with a flashlight, and then when they got close enough to see our fire, they shut their flashlight off, and we didn't see them. And I was thinking, oh, thank God, <laughs> I had all these kids, and you know, s settled down by then. But uh, you know, from that from that time on, uh, their mom and dad would let those boys go anywhere. That with was us. good parents actually checking. It them out. was. It was. So that what they needed was assurance. <laughs> they needed assurance and I needed a miracle. No. Yeah. <laughs> so really just our basic needs. You know, you've heard a lot about the essentials. Yeah. You know, in this time, in this COVID time. Um, but well, you know, we need food, we need water. Right. And you know, we need um, You know, if you We if, need air to breathe. If, if, <laughs> I don't like those. And we'll masks. talk about that in this do you want to talk about that now? Or do you no, want... I'm just talking about the natural okay. things that we need. So if you, you know, when you're, when you're looking at necessities, like if you're getting ready to take a trip, if you're getting ready, or if you're at home, one of the things that you're trying to do is to make sure that you have a first aid kit, right? Because if you have an accident, you know, and how many times has that happened to us where we can't even find a Band-Aid? So, excuse me, we, we need to make sure that we've got a first aid kit. We need to make sure that we have a flashlight in case the power goes off. We need to make sure that we have an extra water. Uh, yeah, water. We supply. need to make sure, you know, and we found that out a few years ago mm -hmm. when the power went out we told for, you about and, that, and stayed out for a week. And so those are things that you don't think about sometimes until you have to have them. Right. Like, so when you're traveling, how many of you know that you need to make sure that you've got a tire jack oh. in your car? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I know where you're going with this. <laughs> Unfortunately, I didn't make sure I had one. This had been years, years ago, ago, man. I was in my, I was probably in my late twenties or early thirties, and uh, well, it hadn't been that long ago. <laughs> anyway, well. so I never forget this, man. I'm driving down the road and I have a flat, and I'm thinking, great, and I, I don't have no. I had, I, I had a, I had a jack. I didn't have a tire tool. That would I, I, that would break the tire like loose. I didn't have anything. And this so this car pulls up, and this lady gets out, and she comes walking up to me, and she said, 
is there anything I can help you with? I said, ma'am, I said, if you've got a tire tool, I said, it would be great. I said, I said, I don't have anything to break these lugs loose with. And so she comes up. I don't even think I had the jack. And, and she comes up, gets all this stuff out. Of here, her car. Out of her car. And I, I go to try and take it from her. And she goes, oh, I'll get it. And she proceeds to break all these lugs loose. I'm standing on the side of the road. My brother's standing there with me watching her change my tire, man. I felt like an idiot. People were driving by, you know, and looking at this and Why I'm thinking, you let her oh, change your tire? I, she wouldn't she she wouldn't have it any other way. She I mean, she took over. She, you know, she she was stout. <laughs> I didn't want to get in a fight with you no know, so <laughs> I mean, she's you know, I, I'm thinking and I told her I said I I can, you know, here let me do that. No, no, I got it. I got it. And I mean, she is adamant to change this. She breaks all the lugs loose, takes them off. She takes the tire off, and I'm thinking, I cannot believe this. And then she, she's got the other tire, and she's trying to get it on, and she's struggling with it. And I said, ma'am, please let me get that. And so I grabbed hold of the tire. You know, I, she stepped aside. I grabbed hold of the tire, lifted it up, lined it up with the lugs, and put it, slid it on. And then I started tightening everything up, and she looked at me, and she said, I'd like to think that I could have done that. I looked at her and I said, ma'am, I'm sure you could have. <laughs> but it was, it, so when you don't have what you need, folks, you become a pawn in the hand of whoever's got what you need. You know what I'm talking about? I, I would never have let a woman change my tire. No. But she wasn't having it any other way. <laughs> I'm telling you, it was embarrassing. Well, so, but God does supply, and this is a common scripture for you, but this is a key scripture tonight. Philippians 4:19. it says, but my God shall supply all of your need according to his riches and glory. And so how this, by came, I mean, Christ by, Jesus. yeah, by Christ Jesus. So this morning when I, before I got up, I just said, I need you, Jesus. You know, I didn't have the devotion yet or anything. And I just says, I, I said, I need you, Jesus. And as soon as I said, I need you, Jesus, I felt that ripple in my heart. And I, you know, I felt, oh, okay, this is what we're going to talk about tonight. The importance and how need much him. we need him. You know what? We need him. And we'll talk more about that on down. But we also need each other. You know, and I want to go back to, you let's, know. Let's talk about the necessities of life and let's liken it to okay. God. Because you can, I forget what it is, you can survive uh, so many days without food, but you can only survive three days without water. Wow. And then you're dead. And I, I thought about that. I thought, man, you know, the three, I, I believe that's right, that you can survive three days without water but then you're going to die so everybody say water water is a necessity it is a necessity now watch this because this is a necessity for our natural life right yes, yes now everything that happens in the natural world has a spiritual correlation so we need water yeah in our spiritual life that's right but before we go there i want to talk about what that you know that we need each other <clears throat> do you know that when god created adam he's he said it's not good for man to be alone so he needed a wife to tell him what to do <laughs> <laughs> she's a helpmate she's, she can't help she can't but help, help but help <laughs> so i mean i thought that interesting because it is when he made him he, he's you know he needed a woman in his life but he I mean, needed water more than he yeah. needed a woman <laughs> You can only survive three days without it, folks. Well, Genesis 2 and 18 says, And the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helpmate. And then, um, so I'm, I'm just going to go on down with this, okay? Go ahead. Since I'm already out here. Let me know when you're ready for me. <laughs> I will. <laughs> Ephesians 5, 33, Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife, even as himself, and the wife see that she reverence her husband. So his need, when it, we've talked about this, but his number one need in the natural is respect. Right. Her need, you know, when it says to love his wife, even as himself, her need is security. She's, she is secure when she knows she is loved. Right. And do you feel secure? I do. Good. I do very much. Okay, so then that's speaking about husband and wife, but you know what? We also need one another. We need the body. 
Um, we've experienced this, I think, more now than ever over the last past three months, over the past three months. Um, we realized how much we need each other. You know, if one of our, say like if one of our members are hurt, our eyes look at it, our other hand grabs it, we're all part of the body. How many of you have ever smashed your finger and the first thing you do is stick it in your mouth? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's like, ah, oh, and you're trying to bring as much relief to it as you can instantly. Right. Hebrews 10, 24 and 25 says, and let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. So assembling there means to collect together. You know, right now we're collecting in two services. Right. You know, uh, we, well, we're collecting in two services because we're trying not to collect too many at once. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, just, and you know what? Watching online is, it's great. And we, and we thank God. This, for I the mean, this is technology a blessing. And the opportunity. Yes. And to get to be with you every night, this is so new for us over the last three months. And I think this is like our 80. Second or 83rd program tonight. I wonder I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I'm amazed at that. But I've wanted to collect together and to be together and, you know, spend time with one another. But um, it's good that you can watch online on Sundays, right? Right. But it's not the same as being there. Yeah. Put a heart up if, if you agree with that. That when you're when we are assembling together, it's just a whole different experience. There's something special about presence so think about yes. this if, I mean l let me put it to you this way the Bible said that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son right now God's omnipotent I mean he's all powerful so he could do anything but the way he chose to save the world was to come into the world he came close to us God came near to us because he knew we needed him most and so now he transfers that to us and he says forsake not the assembling of yourselves together as a manner of some is it what's he saying he's saying you're going to need each other that's right and you're going to need each other more as you see the day approaching and you know the like Debbie was talking about this last three months man has been an eye-opener for us on just how much we missed the physical right contact the being a thank god we had the uh parking lot services or i might have been driving up in your parking lot and, and having service in your house at you know in your driveway in corner somewhere. but you know because we needed that connection so you know uh, matthew 6 31 and 33 anytime i'm feel a need or get worried about something or whatever I always am reminded of these pass this passage uh, Matthew 6 31 33 says he God is Jesus is saying don't take any thought saying what shall we eat what shall we drink or where should we, we be clothed and he said for after all these things the Gentiles seek for your Heavenly Father knows what you need he knows you need all these things and then, but here's it, here's the verse, the 30, 633 says, but seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Right. So first things first, right? So our spiritual life, just like, like we have essentials in the natural to keep us, our body, our physical body alive, um, which essential means absolutely necessary. So we're ready to We go cannot to live now. without it, yeah. So the water. So you have to have water to survive. Number one essential in the natural is water. Our bodies are made up of over 70% of it. You can only survive three days without water. Now here's a spiritual correlation to water. Jesus is at the well and the woman, and he asks her for a drink. And he sa she says, well, you're a Jew, I'm a Samaritan. You know, you're asking me for a drink. He said, if you knew who was asking you, you'd be asking me for a drink. He said, you drink this water, you're going to thirst again. If you drink the water that I give, you'll never thirst. So he gives living water. Right. What about the air? We have to have air to breathe, right? What's the spiritual So the Holy Spirit, that? the Holy Spirit even means the, it's the breath of God. It's the Spirit of Christ. Right. And so and when... The, it, and we need food to survive. And Jesus told them, he said, I am the bread right. of life. And so there you have it. We need Jesus. Right. Matthew 4 and 4 says, but he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, 
but by, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And also Job 23 and 13 says, Neither, this is Job speaking, Neither have I gone back from the commandment of his lips. I have esteemed the words of, of his mouth more than my necessary food. It was like absolutely essential. It was necessary that he had to have God's word. We need his word and, daily. And, it's and, our daily food. And you have to understand this even goes deeper than just than our Bible. The scripture said, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. So the Bible that we have now is an extension of Him. It's His Word to right. us. He was speaking to them physically. Now He's speaking to us through the written okay, Word. Okay, so have you ever said, if you were cooking, we're talking about food now in the natural for a minute, if you were cooking a dish and it's like, man, this needs something. This right. needs something. So Rick, he makes an amazing breakfast, and I'm not just saying it. It's, it's like my very favorite. And I think she says that because <laughs> she wants me to cook. No, no he, he's discovered over this past year that he can he can cook, and I've discovered it too. But anyway, there's one ingredient. It's it's eggs, scrambled eggs, and no, mushrooms. not scrambled. I do. It's not. Oh, well, anyway. Oh, sorry. Okay, is it like an omelet, maybe? It's eggs, spinach. Mushrooms, but there's one special ingredient that if you don't have it, it, it marries all the flavor together, and it's it's the Merlot, Merlot cheese. cheese, and it is absolutely wonderful. He can't find the Merlot cheese right. They're now. out of it. It's sand. And so I I've saw been going for weeks looking for. It. <laughs> I saw spinach in the refrigerator. This, or, you know, some fresh spinach in our refrigerator today, and I was thinking, mm, if we just had some Merlot <laughs> cheese, man. But anyway, so there's one ingredient that we need that brings it all together. It really doesn't work without it. We need love. We need to express God's love. And, you know, there's an old song that says, What the world needs now is love, sweet love. I don't know the rest it's of the it. It's the only thing that anyway, there's just too little love. Yeah, okay, so we need, we need to express God's love and let his love flow, flow through us. And, you know, if we love one another and we're, we're letting his love flow, flow through us there's no rioting in the streets there's no hatred there's there's no uh racism well, yeah, you know and, but think about the source of love god is god love. is love you know if, if without god the scripture talks about the words natural brute beasts but if you put god in the equation then you're going to love each other and how do we get more of that is we get more of him spending more time with him because god is love i love this quote I read today from it's Rick Warren you never know you never know God is all you need until God is all you have and how many have have experienced that right you know he's and really God you're all I needed all along because he is going to meet your every need he's he, but you know the the thing is is when you let God love through you it covers all things and I this little this story came to me today and it was an expression of God's love and it's what a little girl needed in Russia. And it just, it's very touching. So we're just talking about needs. What we need most is really God and his love. So in Russia, uh, when we were doing mission work there, we ended up going to a hospital that was an HIV hospital. You would have never found it. We had to have someone take us to it. They treated uh, AIDS patients like the Old Testament treated leprosy. They were just pushed out. Children were at this hospital. It was a, a children's hospital and these children had either contacted the virus or they were born to someone that had the virus and it would be, uh, and, and it was, you know, there wasn't, they didn't have a lot of information concerning AIDS. So a lot of times they, I remember one story where they kept this one child isolated from people for, several uh, years before someone came it's like three in. Years yeah, now. three years because I think that's what they were doing. Is, the baby you know, never had before, touch, physical they would touch. Test it, you know, to see. They thought it was going to take that long that before they would know, and, and the child had become like an animal. Well, I was at the hospital and I was visiting, and there was a little girl, and her name was Anna. And I, I met her, she was in the hallway, and got her name, and we were talking, and neither one of us knew what the other was saying, but we were laughing, and uh, 
you know, just having a big time. And I had her in my arms. I, she'd come to me, and I picked her up, and I was holding her in my arms. And they told me, they said, Anna has AIDS. And when they did, I'm going to be completely transparent with you. When they told me that, my first response was, oh, I need to put her down because I didn't know a lot about AIDS. But then I realized something. I thought, this girl needs to be loved. And so I just held on to her. And then she I... She was eating I, up too, I, wasn't yeah, she? Yeah, and, and when I put her down, you know, and said goodbye to her, I was back a... Uh, few years well no it wasn't a few years it was like later. one year later and uh she saw me down the hall and when she saw me down the hall she came running and had her arms outstretched and run and jumped up in my oh. arms and I was she was like uh about three and a half I guess then and I, I was holding her and you know just we were laughing and everything and we had built a relationship with the hospital and so we had professionals coming in teaching other doctors Ray and, Highfield. You know, yeah Ray was a big part of that Absolutely. he his friend he had doctor friends in Houston that came in and uh, Ray had a spe I mean that was his ministry and so then we ended up coming back we were building a playground you know time went on and I was about a year and a half and we're building a playground and I was outside looking and all of a sudden, I saw this little girl. They'd come out to play, and I saw this little girl, and I thought, man, that looks like Anna from the back, but now she's like five. And uh, I said, Anna? And she turned around, and when she saw me, her face lit up, and she jumped off that bike, and she reached her hands. Now, the group was standing there with me, and I picked her up, and when I picked her up, and I was holding her, she looked back, she, she leaned out, and she looked at me, and she said, Daddy. Oh. Man, I got choked up. There were the other people with me. Start tears were streaming down their face, and I realized that that girl had equated me as being her father. I was the only male in her life that had ever shown her love and attention, and so she called me daddy. And I thought oh. in my heart at that moment, I thought, "Okay, God, she needs a daddy right now. I can be her daddy." until she learns who her real father is, which was God. And so that's where we're at. We need God. We need to know he's there. We need to know that he cares. We need to know that he loves us, and he does love you. Yes. He's already proved that at Calvary, so I just want you to accept that tonight. Reach out and let him meet that innermost need that you have right now. Can you do it? Can you just stretch your hands? with us now can we pray yes in Jesus father name. we thank you God we just ask you in Jesus name Lord to touch the hearts of those that are watching and let them know how much they need you let them feel the assurance of your love yes, let Jesus. them experience God everything. your presence holding them and keeping them God and speaking over their life show them God that you're real Lord, talk to them through your written word, God. Lord, speak to their spirit through yes, your spirit, Jesus. Father. We thank you that you're always there for us. And we need you most of all. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, to think of God having a need. God has needs, doesn't he? He needs us to worship him, to praise him. He needs us to love others through him. You know, when we're serving others, we're truly serving him. So meet that need and he, I mean he certainly is meeting ours and let him love through you amen amen, amen. we love, love you all. all we'll see you tomorrow night bye bye, bye, -bye.